What's going on everyone? So last week we did a video on line of sight and dynamic lighting in Fantasy Grounds Unity and I'll leave a link for that up here at the logo and down in the description below. But I also want to do the same thing for Roll20. I know a lot of people use Fantasy Grounds Unity and a lot of people use Roll20. So I want to make sure that I'm hitting both sides of the spectrum in the virtual tabletop space. And I want to make sure that I'm hitting, you know, I want to make sure that this community is tight knit. I don't care which one you guys use in your virtual tabletop game but I wanna make sure that you guys are getting the best experience possible. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to go over to Roll20. We're actually gonna talk about those line of sight tools and give you guys a good general tutorial on how to utilize them in your games. Now, if you're new to the channel, uh, my name is Howard. This is the Blue Collar DM YouTube channel, the channel dedicated to breaking down those barriers for new players and dungeon masters alike. I actually stream on this channel Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on YouTube and on Twitch. Link for the Twitch stream down in the description below. We actually talk about all things Dungeons and Dragons, tabletop role playing, fantasy grounds, roll 20, whatever the case may be. And I answer a lot of your questions in there. And that's basically what it's for is to make sure that I'm giving you guys answers tailored to your situations in your game, whether it be related to story building, world building, whatever the case may be, I'm there to help you guys out. And if you want to have your questions answered specifically, you can put some in the comments below or you can come over to the stream. Also, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for the channel if you like this video because I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys the best experience possible. Now, without further ado, let's actually jump over to the computer and let's actually look at those line of sight tools in Roll20. Alright guys, so now that we're over here at the computer, we can actually jump into Roll20 real quick. All right guys, so as you can see, I'm over here on roll 20. I've got a player character on here, and actually I'm on the dynamic lighting layer, but if I go to the token layer, I have a player character here kind of wandering around, and you can see that she has some vision depending on where she goes. She can see through this doorway, she can kind of walk through this area, but if I go to anywhere that I haven't done, the map gets totally revealed. And I'll show you how you can kind of change that and how you actually can make the rooms the way you want them to. In order to do that, we're actually gonna go over to a different page and I'll just kind of show you how to set up dynamic lighting. So we're gonna come over here. So now I just have a random shape here just because I wanna have something that be an object in the way for our player characters. So we're gonna bring our friend Scout back over and we're gonna turn on dynamic lighting. So the way we do that is we go to page settings here, dynamic lighting, turn it on, click okay. Now it's all grayed out. So Scout, from her perspective as a player, she's not gonna be able to see anything. But from our perspective as the DM or the GM, we can see everything because we have it grayed out. Now, in order to enable dynamic lighting, we turned it on for the map layer, but now we got to turn it on for the token. So we're going to click on the token. We're going to hit settings. We're going to give the dynamic lighting. We're going to turn her vision on. So this is going to allow us to actually utilize dynamic lighting. Now, the only way she's going to be able to see anything is either she has night vision or she emits light. So we're just going to say that she emits light, um, bright and dark. And for now, we're just going to say she emits 10 and 20 just for a better visual representation for you guys. But under normal circumstances, I like to see this as dark vision. So basically you emit bright light in a certain amount of radius so you can actually see it. Um, but depending on your character, so like say if you have um, a party that's got player, player characters that don't have dark vision, you're gonna wanna turn that off and give them night vision instead. We're gonna save changes. And so you can see that around her in the first 10 feet, she has a very bright circle. And that's basically the bright light that she can see. And then we have dim light kind of surrounding her. And as we kind of come up to this object, you can see I can still see through it. Now we're gonna go to the dynamic lighting layer, which is represented by this little flame. I'm gonna actually draw a shape. You could use lines, but I'm gonna draw shapes because anything that I have for walls, so that we're just gonna say this is a very thick wall. I like to use the shape tool and I like to make a shape that's just slightly smaller than the one that I'm trying to hide. So that way, if this is a wall, they can see that there's a wall there, but it's gonna be obscured after that. So now you can see that her vision is actually cut off. So if we go back to the token layer and if I move her around, once I select her, um, and I get rid of this silly square that I just made. We can see that she cannot see around this shape. She can only see the areas that are revealed outside the shape, but not inside the shape. If we enter the shape, like say if she's stuck in this room, she's not gonna be able to see outside the shape. So that's basically how dynamic lighting works. You're basically creating shapes and layers so that way your player characters can see within their vision. So then if we go back over to this map that we had before, and roll 20 loads up and you can see i gave her 30 60 because that's what she sees for night vision um, for dark vision but again if you have player characters that are humans or something like that in your party you're going to want to change it and as i move through you can see that i've created rooms and i've created these doorways and you can actually see the doorways if we zoom in you can see the doorways being revealed i'm going to show you what i do in order to make that happen so what we're going to do is we're going to bring her over to this room over here because i haven't actually done anything over here and we're gonna go back into the dynamic lighting layer. We can see the shapes that I've already made and we're gonna make some new ones. So I'm gonna draw some shapes. 
I'm just gonna try to enclose the room she's in right now. So I'm only gonna go out to here. I'm actually gonna go past the shape I made and actually still stay within the lines, but I'm gonna come all the way over here just cause I wanna make sure that she can't see through. And then same thing over here, we're gonna do the same thing, kinda going beyond the shape that we have, but staying within so that way we can still see the walls so she can see that. But now we still have this thing to deal with with these doors. So how are we gonna do that? Well, this is where the line tool comes into play. So this is what I like to do. I like to come a little bit beyond the shape that I've created inside the wall and click. And then I come to the other side about straight and click again. Then I'm gonna hit escape and it's gonna actually create that wall for us. So she can still see the door, but now she can't see beyond. So one more time, we're gonna click, click. It's gonna make that line. Then I'm gonna hit escape. So that way I get out of drawing. And then now that line is there. So then if we go back into the token layer, we can grab her again once I get back into the selection tool and we can move her around and she can only see what is on this side of the door and what's in this room. So then if we go back over here again, so you can kind of hide things behind doors. So it's like, say if they have to make a DC lock picking check to get through, or if they have to bash it down in order to be able to get through, you can easily do that. And then let's say that you're in the middle of the game and let's say they unlock the door and you want to be able to let them keep the door open. You can always just come back into the dynamic lighting layer, select that item, delete it, and now they can see from one room to another if that's what you want to do. And guys, that's actually basically it for dynamic lighting here in Roll20. It's pretty self it's pretty intuitive, not self-explanatory, but once you kind of get the handle of what things you need to turn on and then how you draw the shapes, it's actually pretty simple to do. So um, I hope that was very useful for you guys. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is actually gonna end our tutorial on these line of sight tools and dynamic lighting in Roll20. Now, I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. Make sure you put some of them down in the comment section, but also come down to the live stream with any specific questions that you might have. I'd be sure to answer any of them. We actually stream on this channel on YouTube and on Twitch, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Link for the Twitch stream down in the description below. We'll talk about whatever questions you have here, any questions related to tabletop role playing, Dungeons and Dragons, whatever the case may be. I'm there to answer your questions and help you guys out because I want to make sure that this community is really tight knit and we're able to kind of help each other out here. Now, if you ended up making it to the end of this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for the channel because you'll be enjoying more of the stuff that comes out on this channel. I'm sure you will. Um, and not only that, I've captured your attention this long. I must be doing something right. So um, I hope you guys learned something today. And until next time, happy gaming.